Hey folks, welcome to the February 20, 2024 Kubernetes SIG Docs meeting. I'm your host today. My name is Ray Lahano. Uh, and this uh, first a few, um, I guess, uh, boilerplate things. Uh, this meeting does abide by the CNCF Code of Conduct uh, that summarizes to just to be kind to each other. Um, and usually the first step, the first thing we do on a Kubernetes SIG docs meeting is we'd like to give uh, new contributors a few minutes to introduce themselves if they'd like. Uh, so feel free to come off mute and introduce yourself. Uh, I'll start. My name is Jacob. Um, I'm kind of, I'm pretty new to Kubernetes overall, but I just think it's a really cool project and I want to start getting involved with the community and start maybe trying to contribute. Um, I have seen, or I've been trying to set up my own cluster. So I, um, have been reading the docs a lot and there are some things like maybe I think maybe some small changes I'd like to propose, but I'll save that for later, obviously. Nice. Uh, of course we love new contributors, so feel free to, uh, to send a PR, uh, if you feel like there's changes there that will improve the docs. Okay. All right. Any other new contributors that would want to come off mute and introduce themselves? Yeah, I'll be the next then. Um, hi, I'm Daniel. I just contributed a new concept page on workloads because I saw Tim reaching out on the SIG Docs uh, Slack channel asking for people who would like to work on that. And I didn't know all too much about the autoscaler yet, so I thought that would be a great opportunity. And yeah, looking forward to contribute more now in the future. Good stuff. You're making your first contribution and whole new page about autoscaling in Kubernetes. Pretty, good. you know, we welcome contributions of all sizes, but you don't have to jump in at the deep end like that. The fact you did, very, very much appreciated. Yeah, I, I liked it. it I, I knew Hugo before that already, so I thought let's give it a try on the content side of things. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Welcome, Daniel. All right. Anyone else would like to come off mute? and introduce themselves. I want to do my superpower speech. If you are new to Kubernetes, you have a superpower. You can see the docs in a way that people who've been using it for a while cannot. You can see the bits that are confusing because to us, we're explaining things we already understand. So um, Jacob, Daniel, anyone who is feeling new to Kubernetes, uh, whether you're an experienced tech writer or you're also new to tech writing, we we value that that you know the fact that it's hard to understand, and please use that superpower. Please make notes about what's hard. Please, you know, if you're not sure how to file an issue, pop onto our Slack channel and say, "Hey, I don't know what's wrong, but this is confusing. Let's talk about it." We we love that kind of feedback because without it, we cannot improve our docs for the novices, and that's the audience we struggle in a way. We struggle hardest to to to. to explain Kubernetes to new people. It is not easy to teach. That's my piece. Yeah, I'll agree. Thanks, Tim. I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to share the agenda. Hopefully I'm sharing it. Okay. Um, all right, anyone else? Last call for new contributors. Hello, uh, I am Asim Hamid. Uh, I am from Bangla local localization team and I'm starting now and I think I am leading the leading the team because my reviewers are not available at now this point. He's yeah. working out on with his thesis on his university. Hi, everyone. Hi, Sam. Uh, feel free to reach out as well if you need any help um, making some changes for on those um on those owner list at uh, at uh, at any step along the way. Um, also, if you need help as well, just feel free to reach out. All right, last call. Any new contributors that would like to introduce themselves? All right, let's move on. Uh, so this week's uh, PR Wrangler is Chi Ming Tang, and next week's is Karen Bradshaw. 
And the following week's PR Wrangler is Depeche Robot. Depeche, I know you're on the C there on the call. Depeche is a new uh, reviewer approver, uh, but he's been reviewing for for quite some for a little bit of time or quite some time here for with Sig Docs. Uh, there's a link to the agenda for the PR Wrangler shifts, so please take a look. Uh, and next week's or this week's issue Wrangler is Shri Ram. And next week's issue Wrangler is Depeche. And there's also a link to the issue Wrangler as well. So if you have any questions, if you any questions on if you have an open PR if you want to be reviewed, uh, please uh please uh reach out to the the week's uh PR Wrangler. And same with an issue as well. If you have any issues they would like to be triaged or to, or, or you need or you need eyes on, please take a please reach out to the issue Wrangler for the week. Uh, and also, if you notice any uh, violation of the code of conduct in any events or meetings or in Slack, uh, please reach out to the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee. Uh, plus, and you could reach out to via email. I'll be anonymous. Any other questions for issue wrangler or PR wrangler? All right, let's move on to the agenda. Uh, typically, the first uh, bullet point in the agenda is uh, the release status from release 1.30. See a few folks from the release team here, so I'm going to hand it off to anyone who would like to give the status. Um, hey, so I'm Daniel. Um, from the release, I'm a release doc shadow for this this round. Um, so I'll be giving the update. Um, so for for now, um, the status is yellow, um, and that's mainly because um, the draft PR deadline is coming up day after tomorrow. Um, on Thursday. Um, so all of us have kind of sent out our reminders um, last week um, and about 31 out of 66 have kind of gone back to us. Um, so it's not abnormal, I guess, to have this um, maybe come through a little bit more last minute at this stage. Um, but as it is uh, a significant number and the deadline is Thursday, we're going to keep it at yellow. Um, so we are still tracking that. Um, um, and yeah, we're also um, adding more documentation um, for things uh, without and has been proposals to our board for tracking as well. All right. Thanks, Daniel. I have a uh, few questions. When is the code freeze deadline? Um, that I'm not too sure. So, Celeste, do you know? Let me look it up real quick. Um, let's see, we just had enhancements freeze. Okay. Um, about a week and a half ago, um, code freeze is not until March sixth. Okay. So we've got a little bit of time until then. Um, Daniel, do you need help from me chasing people down? It is not abnormal for it to be like this right before the, the deadline, but that doesn't make it any less frustrating to deal with. Yeah, I think. Um, I guess I guess we can get some chasing, <laughs> um, just so that people don't have to go beyond the deadline and then, uh becomes a bit of a headache. So yeah, so I, I think, yeah, we would probably appreciate some cheese. <laughs> okay, um, will you ask Drew to reach out to me, please? Sure. Thank you. And also, is there a trend to what the uh, other uh, PRs without caps going to 130 with with their four? Um, this I'm not too sure. I, I'd have to add, follow up with Drew on this one, but um, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Kat. Any other questions for the 130 release docs team? Uh, just a few notes. Um, we typically see the docs PR placeholder deadline. Um, it's typically we don't. We this is common, but because um, since code freezes, since contributors. Uh, like to focus on code freeze or or meeting code freeze. Um, so it's always a a task to get placeholder PRs in. All right. Uh, anyone from the release comms team would like to give an update? Yes, I would like to give the update. Um, hi everyone. You might know me as also a Sigdocs co chair, but I'm also on the release comms team as a shadow uh, for 1.30, and so I'm giving today's update. 
Um, uh, our update is our status is green. Uh, we have completed all our follow-up with Shadows and Kristen as our lead with all of the KEP owners for feature blog opt-in um, via their um, specific uh, uh, KEPs. Um, we've had some opt-outs because some blogs have already been written based on their different um, graduation status of those same KEPs. Um, and so, but at the moment, we've got four feature blog um, placeholder PRs that have currently been opened and we're going to be chasing um, the SIG leads, uh, Kristen will be doing so um, on Slack later this week to make sure we have enough opt-ins. Um, and then the last update is that uh, we're working on um, a mid-cycle blog um, to highlight some major changes in that specific mid-cycle blog as opposed to any deprecations or removals since we have none in 1.30 um, as far as we can see. Um, we're going to be opening that this week and starting to work on that um, and we'll likely have to get in touch with a few of those um, different cap owners for maybe some um, checking here and there. But um, other than that, we're still green and all good. Cool. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Any comps or questions for Natalie or the 130 comps team? All right, let's move on to issues and PRs. The first issue is from Chris Negus. And Chris, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks, Ray. Um, yeah, um, so uh, I'm just started to work on this issue of how to include older Kubernetes versions back, back before the four or five that we include now on the doc site. Um, so this is a, the PR that's, that's, I'm sorry, the issue that's there um, has been around for about four years. I, I uh, talked to Tim about it yesterday. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build the site and come up with some ways of trying to include the older versions. Um, he, Tim had some suggestions related to possibly having the content be built separately so that uh, perhaps um, the idea is that um, maybe you, you would only need to rebuild that content maybe once a week or less um, so that it doesn't slow down the builds for the regular the regular docs. Um, so I'm looking at ways of, I'm gonna be looking at ways of doing that um, and including uh, the docs through it, all in one place uh, when it gets displayed, but, um, but maybe storing them, building them separately. So if people are interested in it, I'll have I'll be hopefully getting a prototype in the next couple of weeks, and I'll just I'll, I'll share the link in Sig Docs and and bring it up there. Um, we'll be looking for feedback. Oh, any, any uh, questions, thoughts? I think it's great work. I see a hand up here, Natalie. Yeah, um, yeah. I also think this is a really great work, uh, Chris. And I wanted to. Um, mentioned as a possible other way to um, get the word out and get folks involved. Um, KubeCon is in one month and SIG Docs, we do have a maintainer track talk. Um, it will be specifically focusing on how to use docs as a way to kind of boost your career, but we can absolutely put a shout out in there to some of this work that you're doing um, if, you, if you want us to. Um, so let us know and we can absolutely do that and pop that in the end of here's some example kind of bits of work that you can work on to possibly kind of like upskill on, on the doc side in your career. I think that could be a really great inclusion. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Um, that also puts a little pressure on me to get something done pretty quick. So. I thought it could be a nice way to, yeah, you said a couple of weeks, I'll give you four weeks. <laughs> sounds great. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I will, uh, I will keep in touch and, and uh, find a way to get that information in there. That'd be great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um. Uh. You can just reach out to myself or Divya or Ray. It'll be Divya and Ray giving the talk. Um. But uh, I'm happy to also help out with a lot of the writing of it. So please feel free to reach out. Sounds good. Great. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Chris and Natalie. Any other comments or questions about this issue? Have a think. That's it. I'd like to see wireframes, mockups. Uh, if you have an idea about how the website should look when there are lots of docs versions and um, uh, yeah, like what, what, what could be different visually? Um, don't assume that how we're doing it now is right. I, I don't think we should assume that. Um, the way you choose different docs versions is the top now. So you're, I'm, you're probably, I would have thought looking at doing a mock-up for different top navigation. Uh, if that's your thing, if you're a more of a designery person or, you know, you know, another contributor who's more of a designery person, um, we're kind of like, we're not, 
we're not well represented by by people who do good UX design. We have some people who do great UX design, but most people who who, who show up in SIG Docs have other specialisms, localization, um, Kubernetes, you know that kind of thing. So yeah, we could we could do with some interaction design, UX design, and I'd really welcome um, new perspectives on that. Yeah, that that sounds good. I'm not a designery person. I'm more of a writery person. Um, but there are people I know in my company that maybe I can pull in also to uh, to help uh, with with UX design. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, other than just you know, I don't have a lot of ideas other than just put more uh, versions on the end of that list. At, you know, so we need to come up with some some better ideas. I think you had some other ideas that I wrote down uh, yesterday about uh, different ways of organizing it, but. Yeah, uh, definitely. I'll see if I can get an expert in that area um, because um, to help to help me with that. And if someone here has that expertise as well, you know, sure, reach out to me. I'm on SigDocs Slack. You can find me there. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. All right. Any last uh, comments or questions? All right, moving on to Natalie about uh, reviewers and provers group. Yeah, just wanted to mention that um, PR went in today um, and merged to just update their reviewers and approvers group. Um, a couple of folks who were um, inactive for quite a while out and a couple of folks in. And I just want to give a shout out again to Depesh for graduating into our approvers group. Um, Depesh has been doing some really awesome work um, for us in SIG Docs, and I'm super excited to um, see more of that. And that means we just give more responsibility. <laughs> um, but also I want to use this as a call out that to say that we um, are still looking always for reviewers and approvers um, all the time in SIG Docs, um, unofficial reviews in terms of unofficial LGTMs on, on, on different PRs are always also welcome, but we are looking for folks to kind of amp up their contributions um, and, and to kind of progress into the reviewer stage. We would love to add more folks. Um, you can reach out to any of us in the reviewers, approvers or leadership groups um, to find out how to do that. Yeah, I just want to reiterate what Natalie said about you don't have to be an official reviewer or approver to review. Uh, pull requests, anyone can review. So we're open for anyone who can review. Um, you do have to be an org member to apply the LGTM tag or label, uh, but anyone can review pull requests. And we uh, have any... guidelines. We have we have review guidelines that, that anyone can go and read. Uh, they're open, you, know, that you can not only read them, you can improve them. But we have review guidelines and we're working on some review guidelines for the blog as well. At the moment, I think those are a bit of a gap but we have them you know we have something right, so if you want to review blog articles docs diagrams you can do that just all you have to do is not mistreat people follow our code of conduct and you're good it's all help is welcome yep all right thank you tim natalie all right let's move on to question discussion points uh tim has the first one with automation for localizations yeah um so the uh, Ukrainian localization team are keen to use really like modern software um, to do that. Um, they have a prototype in mind using, I think they were exploring trans effects. And um, in fact, does anyone have any sort of comments or questions? Just at this point, like recap, like feel like they remember, you know, maybe someone remembers half of this and would like a bit more context. Um, any questions? Any any points? Um, I think it, uh, Tim. It might be worthwhile just uh, a quick summary, if you want, then to give every, get everyone yeah, on board. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, we have localizations. the The website docs start out in English, and then teams do the fantastically um, detailed work of taking all of this content in one language and making it into a different language, uh, and keeping it technically accurate. Uh, we have, I think, thirteen localizations that are that are underway, uh, which is it, it's, it's a load. It's a lot of work. Fifteen, wow. Um, and every one of those teams is 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 you know really contributing to making Kubernetes more available around the world. Um, Ukrainian team uh, are particularly keen on getting software involved in this. So, um, 
what's right for writing docs in English is not necessarily the the, the best tool for writing docs in um in and moving docs to another language. And I'm not sure that Git and Markdown is the best tool that could ever be imagined in the first place. I see Celeste as a point. Continue your summary, but yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, so what people who are doing localizing software do is they often use a dedicated tool. Now, the tools that are in the market are usually used to localize things like um, a ride sharing app or a web browser, or an operating system. Localizing documentation is not the same as localizing apps. There's more money in localizing apps. There's more money in selling software that people use to localize a ride-sharing app than there is to localizing open source software. We don't, we don't, we don't pay well. Uh, sorry, folks. Um, so that the tools, the tools that Ukrainian are looking at, that team are looking at, are not ideal, but they do have Git integrations and so on. So uh, we're exploring that. Uh, I think I think we're going to make some progress. I'm 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 pushing for a prototype that has a bit of toil in there, and um, there's definitely on the on the uh, localization team side. There's there's a desire for it to be as slick as possible. Um, but I my my take on this is like I'd like to see a prototype, even leaving some toil in. This is this is the sort of the SRE part of my of my job showing through, I guess. Um, uh, but there's some progress. I think I, I think we might see some pull requests fairly soon. Hmm. Celeste and then Natalie. Yeah, so I have I've used Transifex on a Git based documentation slash product as well before. My first question is it's it's expensive. It's not a free software. So I have questions about that at scale, um, but I was not involved in the billing process when I was using Transifex. Um, the second thing that comes to mind is um, this is going to have implications for like style and linting in the docs, which honestly, like we probably should have had anyways. But the biggest thing to keep in mind with Transifex is like the way that it tracks changes. Because what Transifex does is like, basically it reads in the file line by line by line by line. Um, it tracks it in the software. Somebody goes off and does the translation and then it tracks if the source lines have changed, more or less. Or if the translation lines have changed. And then it basically says like, hey, you've got something to address. So the the TLDR from our side of things from like a purely practical perspective is that if we were to do this, I think we would have to institute a one line, one sentence rule in the docs. Um, so like hard or like soft line break after every single sentence, because that's the only way to ensure that like what tr what you see in Transfex is like one sentence, the next sentence, the next sentence. Whereas like if you have a paragraph of things in like a one Git line, it gets messy in Transfex really quickly. So there's implications for how we do things upstream, I guess is what I'm trying to say there. All right, thank you. I don't need to take a note of that. Nally, do you want to I mean, the question come? Tim, do you want to answer to that first? I have a separate. No, I'll go, I'll go later. You go, you go. Okay, okay. Um, I have a couple of things. So firstly, the one thing I want to point out around this discussion with the Ukrainian team is the other thing they're actually looking for is to have this kind of software sign the CLA um, on their behalf. And I want to point out that this is something that we have said, A, Sig Docs can't make that, is, that, that decision. That is a Linux Foundation CNCF decision and the right ticket has been open for that. Um, and I and I say this because um, we've had um, Robert Reeves come in to try and actually advise the team around something like this. And I want to just make it very clear that this is not something that Sig Docs can make a decision on. This absolutely needs to come from the LF and CNCF around this. Um, I am not a lawyer, but in my understanding, a CLA needs to be signed by a human. So um, either representing themselves or representing a, a corporation of humans. Um, but I'm very eager to hear the LF's uh, um, uh, main uh 
information and ruling on the specific ticket, the Maxim has opened about allowing Transifex to possibly sign the CLA on their behalf, which I know is one point of contention in using some of this software. Um, uh, and uh, Nate, we do have a link to the issue. I'll find it in a moment because I know Maxim just recently created it, but the ticket is around 10 months old. So that's another thing I want to kind of state that this conversation um, has been happening for quite a while now. Um, and when Tim, when you when you talk about how the localization uh, like team likely wants this, I want to just double check what teams we mean because in the work that um, Sioko and Abby specifically, shout out to our localization subproject leads, have been doing with other localizations, um, I have personally not heard about any other team wanting any of this as as it's just been a, a Ukrainian kind of push. Um, and I would personally love a push from other localizations too. Um, for us to kind of get something going. I think a prototype is still important, but if only one localization wanted, I'm also concerned generally out of the other 13, 14 groups that we have. Cool. So uh, first of all, about whether the sentences are lines, uh, I can imagine a preprocessor. Uh, I can also imagine trans effects needing some fettling, some, uh, some help. But we could make a thing that takes the English docs and turns the English doc into the English docs, but with um, you know, soft with like soft line breaks and each sentence on a line, because that is super machine, you know, like a, a machine can do that for you. You give it a branch called main and it makes you a branch called main with every, with one sentence per line. You know, that's a that's a bot. And then you localize that back into Ukrainian and then and then when you've done that, you you've fixed the line wrappings. So if, if that's the sort of thing that Transifax needs to, to make it happy, we can have that. And now I'm going to take off my imaginary uh, uh, tech lead hat, and I'm going to talk about CLA and signing. So this is my personal opinion. Um, the CLA thing is a bit of a red herring. Um, Transifex has a bot that can commit your changes to branch. Git is software that lets you take a commit and do anything with it. I can take a commit that's been made by Celeste and, or Natalie or by Linus Torvalds, and I can claim it as my own, and I can sign it as my own work. It doesn't make it my own work. But the Git software lets me do that. It lets me take a change, um, and you do like a Git reset, head till the one, um, Git add, Git commit, and now I've claimed it as my work. That's no, you know, that makes me no no more the author than if I take a book by Linus Torvalds and, 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 you know, sign it. It's not mine. But Git lets you do that. And if Transifex claims it's the author of some work with 50 co-authors, a contributor on the Ukrainian team a couple of times a month can take that work and say, I'm going to submit that as me and my co-authors are these 50 real humans. And those people have signed the CLA and I've signed the CLA and we've done a ton of work on Ukrainian and now it's ready to commit and here's one commit I personally believe that all of the uh, you know website admin approvers would have no problem with you know that commit landing as a single commit for the Ukrainian thing getting through the normal approval process so there's two stages here there's the process of getting the document ready using a tool which could be Transifex ready for the formal approval process and then there's doing a commit, slash LGTM, slash approve, Prow comes and merges it. The person who does the admin bit there, they don't even have to speak Ukrainian. Like, mm -hmm. so long as, you know, an approver puts slash approve on it, the person who actually fettles that commit into the right format could be a human, could be a script, but they don't have to speak Ukrainian. Abby. Hi, uh, everyone. Yes, so I am one of the localization subproject uh, leads. Uh, so this is, I'm really excited that this conversation is happening uh, because we have been talking around this topic for a long time. So I'm, I'm happy to see that people are excited about working on it more. I would say um, that I think um, other localizations would be interested, but they maybe are not as familiar with these tools because they don't know, uh, they don't do localization necessarily in their day job. So that's just sort of like a, a project they're contributing to. So they may not know about these projects, these tools availability, um, because they haven't been available in the community in the past. But I have been talking to a few teams who have used different 
um, more more AI translating tools or, or Google Translate. Um, and it is definitely something that uh, I think there'll be interest in, but I do think that we'd have to do a lot of, uh, uh, the only thing I can think of is like a roadshow of just to showing them how it might work in the, the, the point of view or, or the, the, the proof of concept, uh, what, what, what get, gets put together. Um, so I think people would be interested in it, but we'd have to obviously make sure it works for them and end their workflows because not every team has the same workflow uh, as, as um, just the one Ukrainian team who maybe is putting it together that works for them. Um, so I also wanted to do just a general plug that we have a, a localization meeting coming up. So if you're interested in this topic or in localization in general, we have a meeting on March 4th. Uh, I put the information uh, more in the chat. Uh, so hopefully you are able to join and I'll also hand off to Natalie. That's great. That's great to hear. Like, Abby, that's part of the, my response to team wanted to be that, like, I know that there are other teams using tooling to help with a lot of the, like the initial translation work. And then they're doing like a lot of the review and stuff, which is really, really great. And I think we have also reiterated that point specifically to the Ukrainian team as well. And so I just want to kind of say that also on the record for anyone out there, um, uh, thinking about localizing into a new language or currently localizing generally, like that is okay to do. Um, but we do want human reviewers as well to make sure that those translations are accurate and that they're kind of correct, so to speak, to the best of a of a of a of a person who's got um fluent speaking ability is able to check, right? Um at the same time, I think I also really appreciate, Tim, that you you separated the two concerns there, which is A, using the tooling to actually complete that work um, and then be the commit that needs to go up. Right. And I think that that's a, that's the line of contention here that I'm seeing where I believe the Ukrainian team wants actually that B work to also kind of be linked up. Um, and that's the kind of area that is a little bit blurry in terms of approval, which is why we need to go to C and CF and LF and so on. And so I just want to kind of make sure that people know that they can still use this, this software, but we can't get, advice from LF uh, folks like like Robert, for example, on the advising side um, that contradicts possible rulings around CLA and signage. Um, we need to kind of get very clear guidelines coming down from LF. And so I've actually asked Robert to follow up with the ticket that Maxim has placed internally to the LF so that we can get some more information there. Because um, it does feel like we're coming back to this question a lot and it would be great just to get info from LF on what that state what the state is there so that we know whether we can use any software whether it's trans effects or whatever we deem to be possibly good um and go from there so yeah thanks for pointing out the delineation there tim i think that's really important to point out and tim so there is an existing C cncf policy which I've, I've only really seen i think this week um i hadn't been keeping track of that part um and it's not good news for people who want to do that sort of uh, integration and, and, and avoid the a little bit of admin because the CNCF does have a policy on bot signing and they will allow bots to skip the CLA if your bot doesn't do anything that could be copyrighted. Well, unfortunately, all of that work by a localization team is super valuable. We specifically don't want it to be automated. We do want it to be the you know the fruits of human labor, and it does it is going to be open source. So. Yeah, we wouldn't just be asking the CNCF to, to you know, um, bless our bot under its policy. We'd be asking the Linux Foundation to change its policy and then apply that new changed policy to a bot. That's a big ask. Big ask. Yeah, I think the first step is that we want the Lynx Foundation to reply to the ticket that's been open for a while. Um, all right, Natalie, see your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to, I know, uh, Nate asked the question in the chat there about have we chatted with Rob about pricing on this? No, we haven't. Um, and a couple of reasons. Um, I think we haven't actually, um, it's only until recently that a couple of us learned that Robert is even speaking to the Ukrainian localization team in the first place about some of this. So that link has only just kind of been realized that could you possibly get pricing for there for that and, and so on? Um, and second, it seems like I don't know where the possible misunderstanding is, but the ask does seem to be about aligning signing from a bot of the CLA as opposed to just use of trans 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 effects in that first bucket of using the software. Um, and so I think there is a little bit of misalignment on 
what is possible and what the ask should be. Um, and uh, and I agree that if the ticket hasn't been responded to, it might be a bit premature in your second if, comment there, Nate, but also the ticket is very old. So we're asking Robert that if we want any kind of movement on generally this idea um, to, kind, to push this kind of software, help us by first getting the CNCF LF kind of like ruling on this and then we can and then we can figure it out so that's that's been my ask to him so far and uh we'll hopefully hear back um I'll try and actually follow up maybe in the next like couple of weeks or so with him um and give an update to this group here um and to let know to let everyone know what that um what that status is and also specifically Abby to you folks in the localization team too and, and give an update there as well All right. Um, all right. I've been taking notes. Uh, so just a few uh, thoughts from me. It's that I do agree that we need human reviews. Uh, you know, in the past, there has been an issue with a one of the localizations using translation software. Um, and also there's a good blog article on how on localizations, how it's localizations more than just translation as well. So big plus one to human reviews of um you know, after you know, if automation software, if automation software is used. All right. Uh, any other comments or questions on this topic? All right. I think we some action items. I think we need to get a re uh, reply from from the Linux Foundation on that uh, tickets from the from the Ukrainian team. Uh, and just see where the uh, see where they stand first off. And then, oh, so okay. Can I go ahead? Can I come out of that? Yep. I would love to see a prototype, you know, uh, workflow with like you know a bit of manual toil, um, because I don't think we need the the, the CLA thing. I don't think the CLA um, bot signing thing should block trying out Transifex and trying out the workflow. And so I'm going to really try and push for a team. Could be could be Ukrainian, could be any team that wants to try. Doesn't have to be Transifex, doesn't have to be uh, Ukrainian. But I'd like a team to try out the workflow, send in some PRs, and um, see if we want to maybe, you know, make a bot. There's a bunch of people who are quite good at making, uh, you know, test, test bots and CI bots and so on. We have a bunch of automation already that takes the work out and sorts things out, um, or a script that people can use. So that we can do this without having to change the Linux Foundation's policy on uh, license agreements, and that's what I'm going to push for. Well, and I think this is a good topic for the ne for the next localization meeting. It's coming yeah, up. I I agree. I was about to also mention that, and also also want to mention that while I'm all for a prototype, I think we also have to be very specific about what that prototype is, I don't know why I'm giving a thumbs up, but what that prototype is um, aimed at doing and what part of that workflow it's it's aimed for, right? So that there is that uh, difference between the CLA signing and everything else. Um, and B, that um, hopefully that the Linux Foundation gets back to us soon because I would hate that we do a prototype, let's say in one possible, let's say it's Transfix, but they say absolutely not Transfix, it must be this other thing. And then like, there's a bit of work that's gone in maybe for nothing. That's only my other concern too. But um, again, I I like big plus on the prototype. I just want to make sure that then there's no, how to say this, um, expectations that are then not met because uh, we haven't properly communicated what that prototype would be used for and what part of the workflow. Any last comments or questions? All right, next topics from Abby about analytics for the site. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been meaning uh, to give an update on this for a while. Uh, so we use uh, analytics on the site and we have a dashboard uh, that was uh, Show, uh, uh, available to the folks in the community on the website, uh, but uh, due to Google changing uh, things, uh, the underlying technology of switching from universal analytics to uh, now it's like Google Analytics 4, um, they stopped tracking. Um, the, the old dashboard was set up with Google Analytics, 
and uh, Google then migrated everything over into this new analytics version. Uh, but we did not update the dashboard. So the current dashboard that's available on the website is broken and they no longer have any more data. Uh, so I've been working on updating it uh, to a new dashboard and I have a link uh, there, which I'm not sure how well it will actually load for everyone, but uh, I just would like to, uh, two parts to this question, uh, which is um, reviewing this dashboard to make sure that it makes sense uh, and populates what people are want to see about uh, the website. Uh, so um, we can put it live on the website and replace the one, the dashboard that is broken. Um, and the other piece of this is that Google currently is holding our old data from the old universal data, uh, universal analytics, um, but it will be deleted. You know, they've moved the deadline back a lot, but it's currently slated to be deleted uh, in July. Uh, so I would like to know uh, what people's thoughts are on what historical information about the website we'd like to keep. So we started tracking analytics um, in like August of like 2016. So we have um, information about how people use the site back all the way, all those years. Um, so I'm not just, just not sure how people will want to, what we'd actually like to keep about that, if anything. Um, so I just, an open question to anybody if they had thoughts on that. Um, just wanted to raise it to you all um, to talk about, uh, we can export that data into um, like a, a CSV file or um, Google Sheets. Uh, and then you can also visualize it using the same uh, technology that we're using for the dashboards. Um, I just, I just not, not sure how much we really want to capture because um, it kind of needs to be a little bit more, more broken up in pieces because uh, it won't be the whole analytics that we can pull from. It'll be just like whatever we want to see, we'd have to make sure to export. Um, So I went through that very quickly. Does anyone have any questions or comments about analytics? Yeah, I have a question. <laughs> I can't find my raise hand button. Um, how uh, how old is the, the data that might be deleted? Is is it from 2023 or is it uh, before that? It's all of the data from the website since we started tracking analytics in 2016. Yeah. So it's I know everything. once, yeah. Once in so a while we... I get asked to, for, for data on the websites. Um, so we we have uh, it tracked from 2016, and then we started migrating to the new system uh, in August of 2022. So we current we will we will retain the information back from starting in the middle middle of 2022 uh, in the the new system. So on the current dashboard, you'd be able to go back that far. But anything be older than that, you'd have to export it out of this other system and then ha just have it in a diff separate place to look up. All right. I don't think we would get asked for old older data than from twenty um uh, from twenty twenty two or or older, but um I do get asked sometimes. So so I so I don't know if it would be safer just to save or to semi export the old data into CSV or Google Sheets and just to have in case we do get asked for uh, for website traffic data. I think the question though is that it's not going to be possible to export all of it. So is there a subset of the data that we want? Mm -hmm. Like, are we interested yep. in traffic from year to year to year? Yeah, I think, uh, I think traffic, um, let me go back to the, what questions I, I have been asked and I'll get back to, uh, to folks on that, um, see what what we've been asked before and see so that we might be asked again in the future and we'll get that over to you okay cool uh but yes if anyone has any uh thoughts on the current dashboard or if you use the dashboard uh that we used to have and you have any particular metrics that you'd like to see like to visualize or have any comments um uh, the issue that I linked up there uh, is where I've been posting more updates and there's also a link uh, to the new dashboard that I'm going to be adding into the website soon. Just want to say a big thanks for this work, Abby. This is really great. This has been like a small pain point for a while. So big thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst yeah, your Google keeps, work Google keeps, 
they keep changing everything underneath us. So it's right. uh, <laughs> very frustrating yeah. every couple of months. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I also like, I also pinged you on Slack with a couple of people who are asking, but I think also when you're ready, if you want to do like more broader announcements in some of our channels too, so that more folks get a bit more um, eyes on it, I think that would also be a great idea. All right. Thank you, Abby and Natalie. All right. Uh, next topic is from... Depeche about the milestone applier, which I also have seen is not working. Depeche, do you want to introduce this topic? Unfortunately, I think Depeche had to drop. Okay, uh, I'll read it off. Um, so we typically have a auto, an automated milestone applier. So any PRs are are targeting the dev uh, 1.30 or the any dev branch for the re current release cycle. Uh, it will apply the uh, the milestone for that release, but for some reason. Uh, this has not been working. So any PRs that are targeting the dev 1.30 branch are not being applied, the milestone 1.30. Uh, so only folks with that permission, the milestone applier, milestone maintainers permission can uh, can apply the milestone. So this is something I've I, I've seen a PR to try to fix it, but it was it would was not the proper fix. So I I've also, I've been looking around to see where where this fix, uh, where this issue can be fixed. Right. Open to any comments or questions. All right, uh, that wraps up all the topics in the agenda. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, thank you for those who uh, have uh, watched this recording. And let me just stop it here.